everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is Jean from Inkyal Studio, and I am here today with a tutorial on making a file folder folio. I haven't done one for a while, uh, and this will be different from the ones I've done in the past, of course. Um, I know it's been a little while since I've done a video. I've been kind of busy, and I'm sure many of you are busy with summer activities as well. Uh, I, this is the kit I'm going to be using. It's from the Pink Monarch, and I believe it's called Blue Steampunk. And just lovely papers, you know, a little still um, on the feminine side uh, of the steampunk uh, theme. But that's these are the papers I'll be using to decorate, and just in case you wanted to know and use them as well. But of course, this is just the basics on how to put the file folio together so that you can use whatever papers you have. So the first thing I have here is I have a heavy duty file folder. I like to use the heavy duty ones, and that's you know totally up to you whether you want to use the regular strength or the heavy duty. And uh, for this one, I have a whole bunch of these middle tab ones left, and they're a little bit more difficult, I find, to really work with as far as leaving the tabs on for the file folder. So I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to cut it off here, and I'm going to cut these off here as well. I'm also going to cut off this little lip here that is on the sides of many file folders because I like a nice, clean, even uh, look over there. So I'm going to be doing that. And I'm also going to be cutting mine uh, in half. So when I have cut it in half at the uh, fold line, I have one piece that is eight and a quarter by, uh, you know, 11 and 11 and a quarter. And then the other piece is going to be uh, eight and three quarters high. So the tallest that I can make my journal, of course, is going to be the eight and a quarter. And I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to align these both up, and so I'm going to cut them both at the same width uh, right along here. So now I have two equal size pieces of, of um, file folder. It is uh, 11 and a quarter by eight and a quarter is what these come out to. Now, this also brings up the um, idea to me, too, that if you have a heavyweight cardstock, like a 110, like really heavy like that, um, you could just use a sheet of that cardstock and, you know, do the same thing as I'm doing. But I decided to put that out there. Not everybody has the 110. Some people have file folders. Some people don't. So um, just thought I'd bring that up. Now, I'm going to score this. And uh, the first one I'm going to score at four inches and five inches, and then at ten and a half inches. Well, what I want is I want an inch. So actually, for me, it will be a little less than that because I want uh, one inch right across here. So. For me, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It will be, uh, okay, ten and a quarter. Yeah, this is just a little past eleven and a quarter, but that's about right. So it'll be a ten and a quarter. So what you want is you want this to be an inch wide, however long your paper is or whatever, but you want an inch right in this area. So that's the first one. And the second sheet, we're going to do it at seven eighths. Oops. Get that squared up. Seven eighths of an inch over here. And five and five eighths, just just past the half mark. Five and five eighths, six and a quarter. and seven and a quarter. Okay, and I'm going to cut off this score line here. I'm going to cut that off. And then I will fold and burnish all of my score lines. Okay, the piece that I just cut down, or the smaller piece, I'm going to take that uh, seven of an eight inch score line there, a little small one, and I'm going to glue it onto the one inch portion of the larger. So 
so I'm just going to run some glue along here. And this is just a way to make the uh, file folder a little wider. And I'm going to glue this down right up to the edge of that other piece there so that we're right right on the edge maybe just a little below the edge okay and so that's why i cut this piece just a little bit smaller than the uh, other side so that it does not get in the way of the fold here so that's why this is just a little bit smaller and you won't see this once you start covering everything up you're not going to see that spine i do see that my cutter was a little not quite so even there i'm going to have to uh, put this back into my trimmer paper trimmer and trim that off there a little bit but this is the uh, essence of the file folder you're going to be um, folding it in this way and this is how this is this going to be the front of it it's going to work like this and then you're going to open it up this way the journal will be sitting inside this spine here this is you'll see how this works later on this is going to flap over another piece of cardstock to kind of make a closure for the journal all right and now you'll need to ink everything up and i used uh, gathered twigs to do my inking uh, oh, one more step before that is we have to reinforce all of these spines here. So um, you can use cloth, you can use uh, tape, you can use Tyvek, whatever you like to reinforce your spines with. Um, you can even use paper. Uh, some uh, uh, nice heavyweight scrapbook paper would probably work, but uh, really the best I have found is either cloth, Tyvek, or uh, a packing tape that is nice and strong and I'll show you the one that I use and so the one I use is uh, echo craft tape I got this on Amazon and it uh, is a, it's a color I like the color of it uh, the craft color and it's pretty sticky uh, has a lot of good reviews on it but I still like to glue everything you know uh, even though it's sticky I still like to glue it down just to make sure it's good and stable in there so i'm just going to go ahead and do that and we'll just put down our glue making sure we cover all of the seams there and you can choose to wrap it around to the other side if you like like so And then you're going to make sure that you just ease up that fold. I just keep on um, going in that crevice until I get it up there. So make sure and make sure the tape is down there smoothly. Okay, like so. So you want to do all your seams in that way and there you go you'll want to do them here and you'll want to do them here so and then after that you'll of course want to ink everything up so i'm going to do that and we'll be right back next i'm going to be making the cover for the journal papers and i'm taking a piece of cardstock eight and a half by eleven inch I'm going to put two score lines, one at a half inch and the other one at one inch. So I have two sections that are a half inch each. And of course we will, I will fold them over. And next I need to determine how wide I want this cover or this section of the cover to be. So I'm putting it, measuring it with my base and I'm going to measure from the one inch spine on the left towards the right and I think what I ended up with was four and a quarter uh, of a measurement didn't want to um, 
get too close to the edge there, but yeah, one, four and a quarter is what I ended up with. And I'm going to reinforce them with, of course, tape uh, or whatever it is that you're reinforcing your uh, seams with. Now you could um, use file folder, another piece of file folder for this cover if you'd like, but I knew that I was going to be putting more sheets um, of scrapbook paper to decorate this with, so I didn't want to get too much bulk in the journal, so I just went ahead with the cardstock. Burnish the edges. And now we're going to be placing the section into the file folder. Oh, distress it first, of course. <laughs> and now I'm going to take the uh, last little section there on that flap. I'm going to glue it down or put glue on it. And that little section is going to get glued to the folder. So I'm putting the line, that seam line there with the seam line against that section of the folder. And I want to glue it close to that um, line, but don't want to go over it because I want to make sure I still can have an easy way to fold that over. And there, and we've got a little cover for the papers in our journal and eventually we'll be putting attachments there uh, so that it's all inside. Now this is going to fold over like so and you can see that right there where my finger is is where the journal par portion will be resting. Now I want to put some magnets uh, for a magnet closure to the hole journal and I'm folding it over the way it's going to be and I'm making sure that the two inch one inch spines there are vertical and aligned nicely and um, I'm going to put a pencil mark down where the edge of that cover flap. Now I'm going to be using some magnets that I had left over from a long time ago project and they do have a sticky side to them. I'm not really happy with these magnets, and you do not need magnets that have stickiness on them. You could just take some score tape or double-sided tape, and you can tape down your magnets that way. And uh, I'll show you in a minute. So you can just uh, tape down, and the sticky part, of course, is on the file folder, and the paper that you tear away is up there up on top and you can do all your magnets that way. Now when you put on this, you're going to put on another round of magnets and you're going to attach it to the sticky side and with the sticky side up, you're going to meet the two together. And these are eventually going to go on to the um, other part of the file folder where they'll close, they'll make a closure. <laughs> Hope I'm not too confusing. So yeah, just just make sure the sticky side on the second um, part of the magnets is facing you. This is sticky there, and the two paper sides are meeting to each other. Come over to that line you drew, and then this is where you'll press down and where that second row of magnets are going to be. So I guess once you see it done, it's a little bit more uh, easier to follow. And I just make sure that they're all down there um, really well. So the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slip pocket. And I'm starting out with this section of paper that is going to fit in that panel. I got my tag that I want to put in the pocket. And now I'm going to measure uh, about how far down I want that slit because I want some of that to peek up uh, out of the slit a little bit. So I think here's about like an inch down from the top. Uh, somewhere's like that. And I'm going to uh, mark it 
an inch down on both sides. And then I'm going to draw a line. And I'm doing this all, of course, on the back side. And draw a line through there. Now I need to find out how much of that slit I need to cut. So I'm going to mark on both sides the width of my tag. And right there where they intersect, that's where my, uh, my where I need to cut the slit. Now I'm putting these holes in because it kind of helps me not to go beyond those places there. I can, you know, feel my um, my uh, blade stop where it needs to stop, but you don't need to do the holes. You definitely just have to watch and make sure that you're cutting in between those two lines you drew for the width of your tag, and then make a second pass with the blade just a tiny bit down, just so there's enough room um, to kind of give you an easier way to get into that slip pocket. And so that, that'll be where you'll be gluing uh, the, the outer edges. Now I found that these magnets were so wide that when I took the papers off, I was kind of afraid they would impede my, uh, the sliding of my tag. So I'm going over them with some cellophane tape just because of that. And you know, if you do your tag, you may want to make it more narrow, perhaps, or you might have smaller magnets, um, whatever. I just found out that I had to put some tape over there so that it would slide in and out easily. And once I did that, I uh, you glue all the way around, but you also glue just the tops around the top split. You don't glue the bottom slit of course just above the top one it just helps it to uh, stay down a little better and then you're going to measure because you don't want to lose your tag and I'm going to just put some glue there to stop the tag from going all the way down so that just depends on how long your tag is you could of course make it the tag as long as your panel then you wouldn't have to worry about that and so by gluing that top portion above that first slit there, it just creates a little bit easier access to that slit. Now sometimes if it's a little closed, it's nice to kind of put in a something to kind of loosen it up a little bit. And there you have it. And now because I glued it down there, I'm not going to be losing my tag. So here's what I ended up doing with that particular section. Uh, of course, we got the split pocket. And then I just took some tags and tabs that were in the kit. Just made little pockets here on the side, a little mini one there, and a mini one down on the the bottom there. Of course you can do a series of slip pockets as well if you'd like to do that instead. So that pretty much concludes part one and in part two I'm going to be, uh, I have an idea here of putting in some waterfall pages with pockets and uh, interactive type of thing in this area and then we will also be putting in our papers for our journal and working on the closure for this particular cover. So please subscribe. I really do appreciate all your comments. I, I appreciate you hanging out with me so much. Thank you, thank you. I know you are busy and um, I'm hoping this is helpful and might give you some ideas. If Even if you're working in a, <clears throat> excuse me, a different kind of folio, maybe you can pick up some ideas in here as well. And we will see you real soon. Bye.